Okay. Beautiful. I think we're doing it. Let's do it. That's too loud. That seems good. All right. Hello, Jeff. Welcome. It's my lunch break. I'm a tiny bit late because I just had a meeting go over time. Um, thought that I would watch the developer direct. I'm looking forward to it. I'm very, very, very excited about Avowed. And Hellblade 2. And the Indiana Jones game. All of which I believe they said are going to be part of it. Um, but yeah, we're probably like a couple of minutes behind because I had to start a tiny bit late because of work. So it's my lunch break. Thank you, Buster Jess. <laughs> Let's roll. Work's good. Thank you for asking. <laughs> I love my job. Oh, hello, Banjo. Oh, I was like, these are... Look at the graphics! <laughs> it's not... Um, sorry I haven't streamed in a minute. Just been a lot going on this year. Beautiful. Should you get a bird and name it Kazooie? I've thought about it. <laughs> Thank you, Stick Mitchell. And El Grippa, thank you so much. So whoever's jamming out on this violin is going hard. Thank you, Craig. I'm doing okay. I'm a little bit unwell this year. I'm always sick. Immunocompromised, it happens. Um, work's been busy, but fun. I've, I've been really working hard on fixing my sleeping patterns because I had pretty bad insomnia. It's been working very hard on that, and um, I think it's going okay. I think I'm doing it, but I needed to prioritize that over making content this year, so that's why I kind of disappeared. Thank you, dancing, flickering flames. We're starting with a vow. Welcome to Obsidian Entertainment. I'm so proud to share with you our upcoming fantasy. I'm really looking forward RPG. to seeing more about this game. Avowed. Bump it up a bit. Okay, sorry. Let me. Avowed is an adventure into uh, the heart of the living lands, a yeah. frontier at the edge of the known world, where you must put a stop to a mysterious spiritual plague and discover thank a you, secret Junior. at the heart minutes. of the living lands. You want it louder? Oh, thank you, CSK. At Obsidian, so we love creating worlds with deep themes, dynamic gameplay, Maybe a tab and thoughtful too reactivity. Okay. <laughs> And Every stream is just is a no series different. of audio issues. <laughs> we set out to blend the believable and fantastical to give players that a world and experience good. like no other. It's colorful, it's vibrant, it's strange. It's one of the most incredible settings in the world of Aeora. Right there. There's going to be a lot of great secrets to discover, one of which has that a looks really good. personal okay. connection to you as the player character. Me? The player you're character? Have a great time getting to know those secrets and leaving your mark on the world. Thank you, Top Pilot. When it in. comes to encounters, Almost to you, that's our crazy. combat brings so the best of the moment-to-moment -moment fun that comes with action-oriented gameplay and the depth and breadth of choice that you get with an RPG. It does look very Here to Skyrim, talk more about Avowed's combat which I'm okay with. Gabriel Paramo, gameplay director. Here at Obsidian, our team's overarching goal is to empower you with choice. So we developed a flexible combat system that allows you to quickly swap from spellcasting and sharpshooting to melee combat. We want to give you the freedom to mix and match your loadout to fit the way you want to play from moment to moment uninterrupted. Interesting the battles. Uh, you can well, I guess a it doesn't. Of weapons, I was going to say the, the graphic style is um, tactical advantages against a wide range of They didn't go types. for like a Skyrim hyper realistic sort of aesthetic. It, it, it does look sort of like out of wild. Sorry, out of wild. Attacks, out of wild. Blocks, parries and special attacks. Which I don't if you care choose about, to so approach right. combat cool with a one-handed wand, this guy's quick looks and good. snappy when yeah. dealing damage to enemies. How's Banjo been? Man, he's doing okay. Using the table ability, sick. you can stop enemies like in their tracks, sort of, um, giving you the opportunity to focus on weaker also? or tougher combatants in an intentional and controlled manner. Not it's important to pay to attention it. to the types of enemies you're dealing with, 
Some units are extremely defensive. Some are brutishly difficult. I like the enemy Others, design. You must make sure you prioritize, or their healing capabilities will put you in okay. a tough spot. Yeah, that's spot. very pills of a To help with the different encounters you will face, we provide customizable loadouts that can be quickly switched during combat. That means you can play however you want. Equip a sword and shield and charge into battle. Dual wield pistols and control the encounter mid range. I feel like what or we're seeing here is not to feel like actual gameplay. Mage. It feels like it is. Like, you not, not actual gameplay, but it feels like it is, um, and then use your offhand weapons power combat arenas. To shatter them. You know, like, we've worked hard to keep games do that. It's a really common dev tool. By creating a balance between pressure and manageability during Like, it's combat. not open world, but I don't Players know. Players will have ample choices for how to build and progress their envoy in the world of the living lands. I don't know what Fortnite's As they get to know the game and the story and explore the many diverse regions. Some quests in Avowed will have you make difficult decisions with profound consequences. Like this side quest you may encounter in Shatterscarp, the third region you'll explore on your journey through the Living Lands. As you're exploring, you come across the bodies of these fallen soldiers. And as you explore the remains of the battle, it's up to you to determine who, if anyone, is at fault. That's Just cool. Four of us. Manu, Welcome, Kiri, Big Boss. Naoki, and me. Training under Captain Ruiki. Trying to keep Thirdborn safe. In other words, you're a gang of camera angles of people talking like they talk past the camera. That I'm one to judge. Here. That is a, that bags. is true. It is kind Take of strange. Everyone's. Our families deserve oh, to be hey, up? and died for them. Making the right choice isn't always what it seems. We embrace moral nuance and gray areas, trusting players to make tough decisions in good complicated at that. situations. My, my squad Thank and I you, rested in the cave by the water last night, and as we were sleeping, we were ambushed by those miserable Zorips. I was so surprised, and it was so dark. I just got separated from everyone else. Look, I, I, I can't face those monsters alone, but I have to know if anyone else made it out. Of course he did. Sergeant Asui never has a thought he won't say out loud. So what did he tell you? That Captain Ruiki was sick? That I was paranoid? That I was a dumb baby? I heard it all often, and loudly. Wait. It's an interesting concept. Asui, it's very, um... Why is he not here with you? Ooh, what happened? What's the name of the game? At the end of the, the quest, you the have ship. a choice. When you confront Private There's, Nauki, uh, the, uh, if you believe pirate. the story he's told you, you can ship. hand over the badges oh my God, it's and got let a weird him go name. back what's home. The name of that game? You're right. Real battle isn't something you can prepare for, is it? It's not my fault. Oberdin. Got it. No, Nailed it. They, Oberdin. They should have never uh, Did I finish kids. Starfield? I did. How was the story? It's okay. Going back to Thirdborn. But if you pretty quick to get through the story. Some parts of it I don't really like. an act of cowardice then he might challenge you to a fight to reclaim his honor. Either way, when you return to town, you'll see the consequences of your actions and the choices you made during this quest. Creating an immersive experience like Avowed is anchored in the world we build. Art director Matt Hansen and the team have worked to create a unique, colorful, and dynamic visual style. From the outset, it does look we pretty knew unique. that we wanted Avowed oh, who's this Chad? to feel rich, weird, Hell of a mustache. and wonderful. We found inspiration in a wide swath of real world cultures, helping us create a unique RPG experience. By contrasting the vibrant with the dull or verdant spaces with sickly ones, we can better deliver complex emotional experiences for our <laughs> Thank players. Thank you, Sumason. I appreciate the that. Is a My uh, current aesthetic is how I look at work every day. Biomes. This is Game Devilana, T-shirt, braided race. hair, no and makeup, each of those regions itself <laughs> glasses, is a conflict messy. Of storied landscapes. <laughs> this is my work aesthetic. All of the regions have a lot of special things associated with them, but I have a deep place in my heart for Shatterscarp. As you're wandering the wastes of Shatterscarp, you might notice off in the distance a vibrant jewel of color. By transitioning from destitute, how's the density? Tones you know what I mean. Of a wasteland of sand, looks very dense. Marching in towards a beautiful oasis. Of, like, There's the structure. opportunity there for life, for adventure, and even a little danger. We hope you've enjoyed this look at Avowed. We're thrilled to share more about the game in the coming months, and we can't wait for you to explore the living lands when Avowed launches this fall. Hmm, okay, here's a quick little look there. Um, obviously talking over it, so it's on me, but this hasn't sold me on the game any more than I already was. It does look very much like an Obsidian Skyrim, which is totally fine.
Not a ton of info there. Have I said what I'm working on at the moment or not yet? I'm not allowed to talk about my job. Y'all know that. Safe to stream everything here will be on PC as well. I would imagine so. That's their... Their thing now, right? Oh, fall 2024. Cool. Looking forward to this. Looking forward to this. Ninja Theory got a lot of bangers on the Hi, I'm Don Matthews, studio head here at Ninja Theory Tom. in Cambridge, UK. We're now in the final months of development on Senua Saga Hellblade 2, and the team is working hard to bring you an God, unforgettable really journey this game. into Senua's unique world and her battle for survival, where we have once again combined high fidelity and immersive presentation with a shorter, narrative-led experience that focuses on the things that we really care about, and that we hope you care about too. It's such Hellblade's so unique. If you haven't played it, I like highly recommend it. Senua is back with a new quest. She wants to stop the Vikings who raided her village right at their source in Iceland. But not just her quest has changed. Senua herself has grown since the first Hellblade. She's made peace with her past and is no longer in such fear of her visions and voices. While the Furies are still her constant companions, she encounters new people along the way. Well, so the first game is uh, quite short. You can get through it. And others who will reject it. Aggressively little recommend it. This space buns are always the cutest hairstyle. I've never done that before, actually. I don't think I've ever done a space bun. Tribe. It is very cute. I might replay. In the game, uh, Senua arrives in 10th century Iceland on the trail of the Vikings who have been enslaving her people. In the so story, pretty. we're trying to be as faithful to history as we can up to a point, establishing a solid framework and then building more surreal elements on top. Senua will face up to giants who have plunged the land into chaos and which in turn has seen the rise the giants of the Joyga, so cool. a violent threat that has swept through the settlements that she'll discover. Senua will make new enemies and also new allies who will come to see her unique perspective as a beacon of hope. And she'll discover along with us how this viewpoint can have its advantages. Yeah, also is a Celtic definitely warrior play with who experiences headphones. psychosis. Seeing things that other people don't, hearing voices and having unique beliefs about the world around her. To bring Senua's perspective of the world to life in a truthful way, we have once again worked closely with Professor Paul Fletcher at the University of Cambridge, as well I as people have a with lived experience with, uh, of psychosis. Dragonator, which is part of the reason I think I love the first game so much. It's terrifying. I actually played Players it Players will find themselves traversing beautiful and hostile environments, seeking answers from patterns and signs that Senua sees in her own unique way, and battling through encounters with enemies that will push Senua to her limits. So visceral. Visceral. On Saga, we've taken everything to the next level. With a new motion capture space, a bigger stage team, a stunt crew, and a new cast. <laughs> we spent a lot of time planning the motion capture shoots, thinking of what events would be good to bring into this fight. Like, how can we make this fight feel different from the previous fight? We have all new combat for the sequel. One of our key goals was the ability to actually tell a story throughout it. It does feel very different from the first game, but it's very brutal and you're very invested in it. I just, it's, I love how dirty so it is, you know? <laughs> She's fighting for survival. That's a we weird thing to say, to but I stand by it. In it's every dirty. step of her journey. We want the player to always feel like they just scraped through, just survived it. Dragon, so we're very excited. Actually, right now I'm really looking forward to um, better than anyone, better than Prince of Persia. Her instincts are amazing, and she gonna play really that. I'm looking forward to it. Doesn't need much help from me. Very excited about Dragon. On stage, our main wait. focus is storytelling. So I get to watch the actors and see all the beautiful expressions on their faces, and then I have to wait a little while, and then I get to see that all again in game, in costume, on location, everything. 
It's, it's a great experience, a great process. Every discipline in the studio is unified in achieving a deep level of immersion to help suspend your disbelief Blood and pull you that into doesn't fade story. off your body two minutes later. Who cares? We were There's so many things like that. A few reference that's like trips in Iceland. You, have you can to watch there. YouTube videos of like things scale, gamers are like. Yeah, times incredible. this game wasn't accurate, but a lot of the time and it's just a trade-off. Like if it doesn't actually enhance the, the player like, experience, it's yeah, interesting that, to talk about it like you care about it, but often people don't actually care about it, you know. And I think that's one of those. Like, if there's a trade-off of, like, well, we only have this much memory, let's um, not have the blood organically the fade off the character's she, face. And, like, the players don't actually care, you know? These voices come to life How often do I go into the office? Uh, please do not ask me about what, including that. Type of auditory hallucinations. I'm actually As actively not immersion, allowed to answer that uh, question. Binaural audio is perfect for this because through headphones, you surround yourself in a three-dimensional space. In the first game, we only applied to the voices that Senua listens in her head. In this game, through a special audio technology and uh, some extra little things within the game, there is music that is binaural. Every single sound has the potential to be binaural, so everything is specialized around you. They and shoot these so well. Experience. Now, Xbox production value, dude. What will we do to us? Music is a strange language in the sense that it speaks to our emotions fast and deep. It's not only about quality, it's about personality. So when you listen to Hellblade, you know it's Hellblade. On the music, we are working with Hailun, which for me is a personal privilege because I really admire them. We feel their craft, their depth, their meaning in the music. It really connects with our game and elevates it to something really special. We are also working with a heavy metal singer, throat singers, and our very own Furies. They sing so beautiful, and we add that binaural touch of music. Whoa, so that's how they do that? creates a very immersive and a very special and unique that's experience. That's so cool. I mean, it makes sense. It's like literally just two people walking around. That's awesome. Our mission here at Ninja Theory is to craft life changing so smart. art so with simple. changing tech. And that's our aim in Senua Saga. Hellblade 2 is to not only Hello. see where Senua goes next, but to deliver something really meaningful for our players. My hope is that they will really connect to Senua as a character, and even if they can't really relate to what she's going through, maybe they know someone that relates to that character and they can then understand that person better. Well, I don't want to sound cheesy, but in a way I'm Senua, right? She exists and doesn't. It exists through all of our work, through every ninja. So we all are Senua. And That's so sweet. we are creating this character that grows and grows and grows and grows and keep growing and keep changing. I love that. So that makes it real. I'm so proud of the love, care, and passion our team here at Ninja Theory are putting into Senua Saga Hellblade 2. Our hope is to not only create a game that is great to really play, really looking forward to, to craft it. an experience that leaves you hope thinking it's and feeling. tight. From our nice. combat gameplay through uh, to our I just action hope it's because I think that's such a strength of the first game that it's so. Solving. Everything is crafted it's, in it, service. I don't know what you what you said. It's a really tight story. You can embark on <laughs> on May 21st. Hell yeah! Looking forward to it. I feel like there's no way this year beats last year for video games, but I, I think it's gonna, I think we're in for a good ride. That's interesting. Square Enix. That's a cool way to do that. What a cute little... Look at you. VFX. VFX and all over the place. If Elden Ring DLC comes out, surely it's going to come out this year. Surely. What time did this start? It started at 12, but I started a little late, so I think I may be like a few minutes behind the stream. Greetings, Xbox players. My name is Masaru Oyamada, producer for the Mana series here at Square Enix. I've never played any of the Mana games. Second of Mana no jiu wo Xbox user no minasan ni ichi haiku kikai o itadakete. What a banger, dude. Taihen koei desu. Console game toshite wa yaku 17 nen buri to naru Seiken Densetsu series no kanzen shinsaku. Seiken Densetsu series wa 1991 nen ni Final Fantasy Gaiden to Sorry, Secret of Mana. I said Legend of Mana. Yeah, I haven't played Mana any of them. Mana to Seiken o megutte egakare ru ai wo teema ni. 
Wait, so this is, is going to be an Xbox exclusive one? That's interesting. Kokoroni Hibiku Gakyoko no Kazukazu. Buki no Tokse o Ikaste Tatakau, Action RPG Toshite. Anything about the opening minutes? Um, we had a look at Avowed, but I didn't think it was anything like revolutionary uh, or anything that I hadn't already sort of gleaned from trailers um, and some more info on Hellblade. But I don't think this is intended to be like a big announcement thing. It's a um, it's developer drama. Mostly people chatting about stuff they're making, which I really do like. No, I'm talking over all of it. Sorry. <laughs> no Silk Song. No. Short round of Indiana Jones. Yes, I'm looking forward to that. I do know some things about that game. Uh, that the public is not aware of. And I'm interested. Hello, I'm Koichi Shi from Gretz. I am so happy You're the coolest person I've ever seen. The newest game in the Mana series to Xbox players. Shoki no koro kara series sakuin ni tojou shiteru monster tachi wa watashi ga kouan shita mono desu. Such a cool job. Naka ni wa shougakuse no koro sude ni imeji ga dekite ita mono mo arimasu. You just get to design monsters. I mean, my job's actually really cool, but still. Kon sakuin ni wa shougakuse no koro sude ni imeji ga dekite ita mono mo arimasu. You just get to design monsters. I mean, my job's actually really cool, but still. Kon sakuin ni wa shougakuse no koro sude ni imeji ga dekite ita mono mo arimasu. You just get to design monsters. I mean, my job's actually really cool, but still. Kon sakuin ni wa shougakuse no koro sude ni imeji ga dekite ita mono mo arimasu. You just get to design monsters. I mean, my job's actually really cool, but still. Kon sakuin ni wa shougakuse no デザインの方向性からモデルの完成イメージまでを監修する立場でプロジェクトに参加しました。聖剣伝説ファイナルファンタジー外伝を作っていた頃から、自分の頭の中ではモンスターたちは立体的に生き生きと動いて、これまで自分が携わった作品ではそれらをどうやって当時の技術で表現できるかにこだわって作ってきました。最新作では、聖剣伝説のモンスターたちのただ可愛いだけではなく、恐ろしさの部分もしっかりと表現できているので、私たちは、私たちは、私たちは、私たちは、私たちは、私たちは、私たちは、私たは、私たちは、私たちは、私たちは、私たちは、私たちは、私たちは、私たちは、私たちは、私たちは、私たちは、私たちは、私たちは、私たちは、私たちは、私たちは、That does look like Banjo. That looks a lot like Banjo. You can't tell me that doesn't look like Banjo. So, I inherently love it. Thank you, Kyle and Valkyren. Some of them really look like Pokemon. I mean, yeah. <laughs> it happens. 具体的なイメージが浮かんできて、それぞれの特徴を持っていながらラフデザインを書き起こしました。Why not? You know, if you have the option to. アイデアを出してもらいながら、足の長さ、丸まった時のイメージがある。ゲームの中での見え方も考えながら調整を重ねていき、ピックルは誕生しました。もう一つの挑戦は楽曲面です。過去さまざまなコンポーザーが携わられた楽曲の雰囲気が感じられつつも、最新作として、素晴らしい新たな楽曲が生まれました。BGM でもしっかり聖剣伝説シリーズらしさを感じてもらえると思います。過去シリーズの楽曲を手掛けたクリエイターたちが、全100曲という大ボリュームの制作に挑んでくれました。新たな試みとしてフィールドの探索からバトルまでをシームレスに体験できるよう、今作にはインタラクティブミュージックを導入しており、冒険の没入感を高めてくれます。探索中の BGM がバトルに入った瞬間、アレンジが切り替わる様を実際に聞いてみましょう。今作はアクション RPG 聖剣伝説のアクション部分が強化されています空中でのアクションがバトルの鍵となっており武器での攻撃だけでなく魔法での攻撃も可能になっていますそして今作ならではの特徴として聖剣伝説シリーズではおなじみの精霊たちがいますが I mean, this combat does look sick. 力を宿した武器を使うとバトルを手助けしてくれるようになります
Battlefield 2 going to be announced? Yeah, definitely. During today's Xbox Direct. Any minute now. <laughs> it only took 10 years to make the first one. It's not interested, but this looks nice. I think, uh... I agree I'm not interested, but it looks nice. Maybe I could try it. I mean, if it's going to be on Game Pass. Where is State of Decay? Mm, absolute banger. State of Decay is underrated. That's why they gave it such a big spot. First one coming next month. Because I, th I think I read something about like Xbox trying to make more effort in the Japanese market um, and that Game Pass on PC has been really successful in Japan. Like growth for Game Pass on PC in Japan is growing faster than the PC market itself is, um, which is like exactly where you want to be as a business. Is this that game that had like the unbelievably cool art style? Just like bonkers creative. Hello, and welcome to Oxide Games. Hello. We founded the studio in 2013 with our decades of personal experience building some of the most beloved strategy games of all time, like Civilization V. We came together to create something new and innovative in a genre we all love. Ara History Untold is the game we've dreamt of making. Ara is an homage to historical gamers, strategy okay, gamers, I think this is not what I was thinking. Gamers. This it is like a... all the depth and gameplay fans of this genre love, where you'll explore it's, it's the world, like expand your nation, govern your people, and engage with your rivals on the international stage. But it isn't just more of the same. With Ara, we wanted to challenge some of the preconceived very Sims -like notions UI. about the genre, push it forward in a modern, mm. empowering, and truly compelling. So and bad at these style games. I'm also really bad at them, For but example, find them very addictive. You have over a hundred instruments on yeah, display in the strategies. office, which are all things that we purchased in order to add to the I'm worst at RTS. Really bad at RTS. Expand the game and make it really good. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Dan. That's Dan. We started in his basement. It's been an amazing process to see from concept to completion. We started small, building a robust game engine, questioning our design assumptions, and prototyping out features, rediscovering what made us fall in love with strategy games in the first place. The end result is Aura. All of these devs are doing such a good job of speaking. Game that As somebody who has world, where you spoken of a lot of devs, but also like have to interview devs in their nation studios nation while the I worked at IGN. For Aura, we knew we needed deep systems. A lot of people are not great at speaking. These people are doing a fantastic job. To experiment and make meaningful strategic choices. It's harder to speak on camera than I think you give it. Style. Credit for people wanted who have no experience doing it. It's be very daunting. Parts of history and give players from around the world the chance to see the game reflect their unique perspective and not just ours. And finally, we knew that for players to feel the impact of their decisions, they would need to see their choices reflected in the game world itself, not just through numbers on a menu. One of the first differences you'll see when you dive into Aura is what we call the living world. It's a procedurally generated alternate Earth, bursting with life. An intuitive, authentic, and immersive space, a blank canvas for players to paint the society of their dreams. The living world isn't just a map. Is this a it mobile? The uh, I mean, this is an Xbox Direct, so I would assume it's PC they can console see game. Everything from the settling of yeah, there's the no way this functions on mobile. It's way too, this is way too much gone. Over time, to the thousands of that UI would work their lives and reacting to the changes. We want players to feel like they're truly occupying the world, leading their people as they thrive and grow. Core to the vision of Aura is our philosophy of rule how you want to rule. And no feature better exemplifies this than the prestige system. To win a game of Aura, players will compete with their rivals to build the most influential, impressive, and important I bet you this game is the world awesome. has ever known. This is measured by prestige, 
the player's score that proves their worth as like a I bet you it ends up reviewing very well. System gives players this is the so detailed. To decide what kind of leader they want to be. Do they want to pursue <laughs> what the great fake mobile ads look like? You're right. The ones Military that like might. don't function like this at all, but wish they did. Scientific <laughs> Totally do. I was thinking theirs. about making a video about In those. Aura, there are no set victory conditions. Like the fake players mobile get to ads you get on what Twitter. What is most important to them, and focus and prioritize on those goals while still being able to win the game. Personally, when yeah, I play Ebony, Aura, that's it. I like to build triumphs. So weird. triumphs are our collection of incredible monuments and architectural achievements from throughout human history, like the Great Pyramid of Giza. They're hard to build, but worth it, giving huge prestige bonuses and game-changing abilities to the nation that constructs them. Another I didn't see Max. Aura that I'm personally Was that Max? excited about is our crafting system. The crafting system offers a unique challenge to the player that they generally won't see often in the 4X genre. Succeeding at balancing, gathering the right things, turning them into the tools that you Gotta need, make and some work finally boots. getting to the outcome or reward of something like an important improvement or triumph just changes the challenge that exists in Aura compared to other 4X games. Crafting plays out in Aura at a national scale, with players honing and combining the natural resources they harvest into all manner of goods and components. Those are the foundation for everything, from international trade, to improving their cities and citizens' lives, and even manufacturing the weapons necessary to draft military units. The crafting system in Aura encourages thoughtful, advanced planning. It rewards players can who can see the strategic monuments? outcome of all Don't imagine the collective so. decisions. Is it Civ? No, not but just the individual fairly ones. similar. I'm proud Functionally of the work that's very gone similar, into our simultaneous turn system. <laughs> this makes me Many strategy games capitalism. have players alternate, taking turns It'll and get reacting you. to their opponent's moves. In Aura, all players' actions are Oh my god, I played like time. far more this farm build than I to navigate to uncertainty to predict and strategically launch. plan for a variety of scenarios in the moment. This system makes Aura just feel more real. OG Farm Bill was good. Game, I had a good time making that Once your turn is finished, fall. you have to wait for a long time. With simultaneous turns, generally speaking, Crazy that was a Facebook game. Low, you get to keep playing the game and stay engaged Does it still rather exist? than I having those periods of downtime where you're not doing anything. Is this for Xbox? It's not it sure easy is. sifting through all of history and picking what to include. For Aura, we wanted to offer a fresh perspective, so we looked at cultures and societies throughout the millennia with the broadest lens possible. Where this approach really shines is in our leaders. Leaders are so often seen as military personnel or prominent government figures, but leaders come in Control so many different forms. Control of us keyboards interesting. They're yeah. Leaders, How do you make a game like this function on? And many more. Control. Each I mean, again, I guess the same way. Has a number the same of special abilities to determined by their personality traits, as well, as well as a powerful and unique leader trait, informed by their contributions to world history. With a diverse global roster, we know players will find leaders that they will oh, so want check to play. Exists, but microtransactions and even a few that may surprise them. They went when it launched too. It still had microtransactions when it launched. I didn't the um, buy power. any, but it always existed. I think. For us at Oxide, player feedback is the only way to really understand what you're making. It gives us that priceless perspective from the people we're making Aura for, you. Building the game alongside real players has given us that critical player feedback. In the end, we believe this makes for a deeper connection between the players and the game. Fortnite should have historical figures. When we first introduced the concept That's actually of dangerous not a terrible wildlife idea. <laughs> the game. It turns out, in our first iteration, it was maybe a little bit too aggressive or disruptive. We knew we should probably make a change when one of our insiders made a forum post that was just Cougars, 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 I hate cougars! <laughs> Someone get these feline demons away from me. I'm happy to report, based on more recent feedback, that I think we ended up in a good place with the overall threat level of mountain lions to a player's citizenry. <laughs> it's so funny. It's been years of hard work to bring you a strategy experience like no other. And we're so excited that we can finally see the finish line. We can't wait for players to get their hands on the game later this year. But the launch of Aura is only the beginning. We are going to maintain our insider program after the release date and continue to listen to players that's and support the by George Washington. The yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Of everyone at Can you Games, use the likeness of historical figures? Today. We can't like, wait for Are they public Aura domain? And to create your own history. Can I put George Washington in a video game if I want to? I think I can, right? Or is that like you don't have to license those, do you? I think you can. Yeah, like Napoleon. You can just put people in games. It seems crazy. I mean, Assassin's Creed did it, but I don't know if Ubisoft got permission. Historical figures are public domain. Okay. Does the estate of George Washington exist? Surely. Ooh, excited about this one. I love machine games. 
Hej och välkommen till Uppsala Sverige här hos Machine Games. We are really excited to finally be able to share our work on Indiana Jones. Looking forward to this. Since the first film came out, Indiana Jones has always represented the ultimate adventure. Even today, it's one of the most iconic franchises in pop culture. Sorry if you can hear my stomach. In this game, you aren't just playing as Indy, you are Indiana Jones. You will see through his eyes and experience a journey that we hope lives up to the proud legacy of Indiana Jones. Uh, Bob, so we've known that Machine Howard Games have been working on this for a while. told us about his vision for the game, we knew we would be a very good fit to help bring it to life. I've wanted to make an Indiana Jones game forever. I'd had this idea for what it would be like and the story, what Indy was going after, what period of his life it was in, what kind of arc he was going to have. And as the years went on, I thought, who would be like the best studio in the world to make this? And it was my friends. I really do think they'll kill this. I can remember pitching Lucasfilm on the game and being, you know, a little bit nervous because look, it's, you know, Indiana Jones and their response was just overwhelmingly positive and just that excitement has bled through the whole project and they have just been so trusting and supportive of everything as that long as it's like the, the first two and not it's the third one what was that third I've wolfenstein game called my whole life and i couldn't be more excited to show I'm you so what the team here has been up to let's take our first look at the new indiana jones game <laughs> let me tell you what you are missing dr jones while you were playing your pointless game, I was playing you. If you're wondering if maybe you should have built yourself a life of meaning instead of ending up here, dead and forgotten in the sands of Africa. <laughs> I like the way he looks. That's it? Oh, okay. <laughs> I was about to be very upset. Uh, no, it is not Harrison Ford. Myths. History. Just different ways to interpret the past. Thousands of years of humanity's thoughts and beliefs scattered and buried i mean i know who the voice actor is uh, but i don't imagine i can say to be found you can't just run away from thank you chris indiana watch me yeah so i expected this to be in first person are some parts of it third person Throughout history, mankind has built sites of great spiritual sites. Looks pretty. If you were to draw a line through these ancient sites around the globe, you get a perfectly aligned circle. I mean, it's just, it's such a video gamey concept anyway. Like, indie is video gaming. Okay, so it is first person, which again, I was expecting from the machine game. Nice timing there. Trust me. It ain't a walk in the park. Okay, then. Let's see if you can keep up. What do you mean if I can keep up? I think this will be fun. Patron of the fallen angels. Oh my god, my stomach. Protector of the... Remind me the great circle. Yeah, nobody's more equipped to make a Nazi punching game than machine games. <laughs> Does anyone you should have faith in for the Nazi punching genre? Any then? idea how old that was? Looks like Andy. Indiana Jones is such an iconic character, and he means so much to so many people. Everyone here at the studio has their own indie stories and memories. Most of us grew up with his adventures and have been fans of the movies and the character for years. 
He's a brilliant archaeologist. And I was going to say, like, oh, the hard thing is how do you make it different from Uncharted or Tomb Raider, but the first person, and for us, I think, we'll, synonymous it makes adventure. a huge difference. It inherently now makes it feel very different. we have the opportunity to tell a new Indiana Jones story for a modern gaming audience. Our game is all about putting you in Indy's shoes, letting you see and feel what he sees That's cool. Feels. I always Us love Indy guys into that stuff, that like how they through first adapt film to It's games. the ideal perspective to bring you into the rich, exciting, and interactive world we've built. We believe that being up close and personal to the adventure is key, making each action feel like your own. Whether it's cracking your whip, that looks fun too. In ancient temples, or seeing your knuckles go bloody in a fist fight. All of these moments are much more intense. I don't know what the UI looks person. like. Currently, I don't but see we any, still want you to have those perform. moments. Seeing his iconic silhouette with the hat, mm. the whip, and so for things like cutscenes and environmental traversal, we pull the camera back for a third person. Oh, there you go. Sure, that makes sense. Yeah. Indiana Jones and the Great Circle is set Interesting. between Raiders of the Lost Ark and The Last Crusade. Mm. When our game begins, Indiana is working at Marshall College. He wakes up in the middle of the night to the sounds of a break-in and rushes to confront the thief in the college museum. The mysterious giant of a man makes off with what seems to be a historically insignificant artifact, sparking Indiana's curiosity. Who the hell are you? Following the trail, Indiana heads to the Vatican, hoping to learn why this particular relic was stolen, and discovers that things aren't what they appear. Cool. He starts pulling at the strings of a mystery, and it all unravels until he has no choice but to see it through to the end, whatever the end may be. On next plane to Rome, stop. Need help, stop. Meet me in Vatican, stop. We always talk about how clever Indiana Jones is. That had to be one of our guiding principles when we were thinking about the type of game we is were he? making. It wouldn't be Indy yeah, if he no, yeah. wasn't using his wits to get through the situation. The most authentic Indiana Jones experience we can make is the one that makes you think first. Get in the hang of this. Sweet. Sure, there cool will puzzle be stuff. some obstacles that will be more easily overcome. When a video game has a better story than the latest Indiana Jones movie, man, guard. the movie but was not great. Most <laughs> of the time, you'll have more fun and, to be honest, a more genuine Indy experience by finding more clever ways to solve a problem. We always want to be offering more solutions, whether it's trying a different path through the environment to get around enemies, observing enemy patrols Thank you, and Swift using fan. them to your advantage, Swift fan. or using the tools at your disposal, like the whip. It's an amazing global adventure with action propelling you through your journey. We have these really diverse environments for you to explore. Indy's journey will take him to the forgotten Ooh. temples of Sukhothai, the pyramids of Egypt. I also feel like because it's been a minute Himalayas since we last had a beyond. an uncharted. We look carefully at each location. It's gonna feel the distinct. Time period the game is set in, and obviously my head goes on uncharted, but authentic and accurate as possible. We love creating rich, vibrant worlds, and in this game, we also had the goal of making it feel like a true cinematic Indiana Jones adventure. One of the biggest ways to do that is with the music. Such an important part. John Williams is the original composer for the indie films, and we're really lucky to have found Gordy Hubb, oh, a composer who's been able to capture Williams' essence okay. with his score <laughs> for The Great Circle. We also take a very movie-like approach to things like cinematics. Has a totally different feel than Uncharted. I agree, to be clear. Production style. We use a lot of stunt actors. Things like this help us bridge the gap between making a game and making a movie. And of course, our characters do a lot to help bring the world to life as well. Next to Indy, Gina is our other main protagonist. Where Indy is pursuing answers just for the sake of curiosity, Gina has a personal stake in getting to the bottom of the core mystery. Gina is an investigative reporter who has a lot riding on this adventure. She's been tracking a lead for some time, and now she's found an ally in this determined American professor. Their paths are intertwined, and they'll need each other in order to get to the bottom of this mystery. Okay, then. Let's see if we can keep up. Fine. What do you mean if I can keep up? We always love our villains, and think we might have found our favorite one yet in Emmerich Voss. Who's this Chad? psychological man. 
is obsessed with the human mind and manipulate. Oh wait, he's a Nazi. I take he's it back. Highly intelligent. You can't be a Nazi and a chat. They're both brilliant people, compelled by the passions and obsessions, but driven down wildly different roads. He creeps up on you and gets under your skin like he gets under in the skin. It's captivating. Dead and forgotten in the sense of Africa. One of our models for India. No such thing as a chassis. Circle, doesn't exist. Is adventure first. But in every India adventure, there are always those moments where he finds himself in the action. That's been one of those balancing acts for us, and we've ended up with this sort of That's hybrid a sick experience show. that mixes melee combat, stealth, and gunplay. How you approach any given situation is up to you. You may choose to sneak around an enemy patrol, or maybe you'll just pick up a shovel and whack them on the back of their head. And when you can't use your wits, you got in this most iconic tool. Just like you see in the movies, one of our goals has been to make the whip as fun and multi-purposed as possible. My favorite whip in games so far is probably like into every aspect dog of the side game. Is? You can use it as a traversal tool tough? to make Physics. your way around the environment. You can use it as a distraction. And yes, you can absolutely use it in combat. I think this game's gonna be good, man. Everything you'd expect from in this whip. And hopefully this would be the highlight more. of this particular presentation for me. I didn't need to see any more Hellblade though, because like, I was already sold. That, that giant the trailer from the, the Game Awards, I think, was so sick. To Indiana Jones. Obviously, there are a handful of puzzles on the main path, Thank but you, a lot of Live puzzles Wyatt are optional now. and are just there for the players who want to experience them. I agree, Epic lighting looks traps, really good. Small secrets and hidden puzzles that blend solo right the entire in game. with their surroundings. Let me solo whip her. One thing I love about our game is the level of interactivity that we have. We have this world of mystery where Those anything two could potentially hide a so secret. The more you look, focus. the oh, more you'll discover. Did they show about? They did at the start, but it wasn't very much. It's just a little bit of um, an example of a quest and some combat and spending stuff. It was very long. Oh, you gotta be kidding me. I want to thank you all for joining us for our big reveal of Indiana Jones. Thank you. And I'm, Ritz. I'm really looking forward to Machine this. Machine Games is known for creating great. these roller coaster the highlight experiences for me for sure. with huge set pieces, really fun. surprising twists, and immersive narratives. Yeah, I think Machine it's Games is such a great studio to make it. It's exciting for us too. that we have been able to stay so true to the Indiana Jones franchise and create such an authentic experience while still being able to showcase what makes us us. We are making a Hell game yeah. for everyone. Whether you are very familiar with the franchise kind of look like or not, yeah. because at the Which, heart like, of Indiana we love. Jones, we love is that an incredible for all of us. Adventure. That's great. <laughs> I think that's something everyone the ones wants coming to be out. part of. I'm also very excited to announce that Indiana Jones and the Great Circle will be coming later this year. Well, cool. I cannot wait to share more. I was more expecting soon. it to be early next year. Awesome, awesome. Yeah, I think this is gonna be a good time. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Can easily see it slipping into 2025 again. That's what I thought. I mean, it could always be delayed. <laughs> Sweet. Yeah, it looks really distinct from other things in a in a otherwise very common genre. Machine games are awesome. Will it be on Game Pass? I imagine it will be day one on Game Pass. But what do I know? But I would think so. I would love for him to say available now. It doesn't really happen. It doesn't really happen that way. What am I most hyped for from this direct? Oh, definitely indie. He has a little outro sizzle. I guess Hellblade for right now. Like, I'm really excited about Hellblade 2, but again, we'd already seen it and I was already so sold. There's a certain point where I don't need any more Is marketing for certain animals, games. Children and game developers. <laughs> Our mission here at Ninja Theory is to craft life-changing art with game-changing tech. Core to the vision of Aura is our philosophy. All of these of games look good. Some of them aren't for me, and that's always fine. And kind of stay happy. Good, if anything. Like I appreciate the um creating an diversity experience like of the portfolio the broadcasted build. in today's developer direct. No, you aren't that. just playing as in the you are in the Jones. My name is Masaru Oyamada. Konsakuwa action RPG. Well, look at me. What did y'all think? Where is stated to K3? Did that get announced? I really need to play more stated to K. I really I love those games. It did get announced, didn't it? 
Under Labs. Oh, it was announced in 2020? It's so long ago that I just forgot. It was announced in 2020. Where? And have, when is that the last time we saw it? Shut up, Ethan. How does God play video game? With boob? It was a good time. I enjoyed it. Um, pretty chill. Nice way to spend my lunch break. Very excited about Hellblade. If I leave you with anything today, ladies and gentlemen, I would be leaving you with play Hellblade. Play Hellblade. Do it. Do it. If you don't, I swear to God, if you don't play Hellblade after this, listen to me. Listen to me right now. All right? Hellblade. You piece of shit. Play it with headphones on. It's really short. You have no reason not to play Hellblade. Okay? You heard me. You son of a bitch. <laughs> I do stand by what I said. I'm sorry I threatened you all. Please don't tell Twitch. Did I just break terms of service by uh, being too mean? They're going to take my account down. She bullied her audience and told them to play Hellblade too aggressively. It's really good that you should. Um, again, with headphones as well, because the surround sound in that game is like nothing else. And I'm uh, looking forward to Hellblade 2. Yeah, what else have we got coming out this year before I have to get back to work in 10 minutes? 2024 game releases. I look this up every month. Love a video game release schedule. So, we've got... Um, this is January. Prince of Persia, I'm really looking forward to. Is that out today? What date is it today? It is out today. So maybe I'll try and stream that after work today, actually. Um, really, really looking forward to that. Uh, way more than I expected. Um, I heard it's really long, which is a bummer. Like, I was hoping it would be a kind of smaller experience. But yeah, that's number one. Like a Dragon Infinite Wealth looks awesome. We love that. Uh, a lot of people are very excited about Tekken 8. I don't really play fighting games anymore, but I will be watching that one. Elden Ring DLC show would be nice. I'm sure it's coming this year. We just don't know yet. Um, but yeah, this month, Prince of Persia, Like a Dragon, Infinite Wealth. This game looks so fucking fun. It looks so... Oh. I have also thought about making a video just about the Like a Dragon slash Yakuza series. Because I feel like they're underrated. And like, uh, underrated is a dumb word in that like... Usually we just mean, I wish this was slightly more popular. It doesn't actually mean it's underrated. They get rated pretty well, you know. Um, but that series is so uniquely good. The direction is just impeccable. Yakuza, oh. Thought about just making a video just to scream at people about how good Yakuza is. And bitch, maybe I will. Maybe I will. Suicide Squad Kid the Justice League. I just had a video, YouTube video went up today that's sort of about that game. I really need to change the thumbnail. The one that YouTube selected is terrible. It's just a picture of my face. Not, it's really, it's really bad thumbnail. I'm going to change it after we finish this. Um, game does not appeal to me. Previews came out. Some are positive, some are negative. It's just the live service, games of service thing loses me on Suicide Squad. It's just not for me. And that's okay. It's just not for me. It's just not for me. Um, Persona 3 Reload. I am looking forward to that. That's not bad. Probably not going to play it, though. Skull and Bones is finally coming out. I will definitely play some of that. I don't know how into it I will get. It's actually coming out. That's crazy. Pacific Drive is a really interesting looking game. If you haven't seen that. Um... So this one, again, is just looks really unique to me. Uh, it is an open world, I think open world, survival game. Yeah, but you're in a car, right? So it's Pacific Drive is a first person driving survival game with your car as your only companion. Navigate a surreal reimagining of the Pacific Northwest and face su supernatural dangers as you venture into the Olympic exclusion zone. I just think it's a, such a unique concept um, that I'm really looking forward to giving it a try. Like, we've seen a bunch of gameplay. It's like apocalyptic road trip survival game. With, obviously, upgrades for cars and stuff. I'm just, yeah, I'm really looking forward to giving it a shot. Uh, just unique. Um, 
What else have we got? A lot of people very excited about the Star Wars Dark Forces remaster. That does look like a really good quality remaster. Obviously, Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, very exciting. That's going to be one of the biggest games of the year. And Close Beta Skull and Bones actually did a good job making like a more solo-friendly version of Sea of Thieves. I just don't know if I want it. I'm definitely going to play Skull and Bones because that's like a game that I'll play with friends on stream for sure. So I'll play it. Um... But, like, the appeal of Sea of Thieves is shenanigans with friends to me. I just, I just, I don't know. I'm not sure. We'll see. Interested in this. Very excited about this. Very excited about this. Can't wait for this. I actually feel like this is a pretty solid start to the year. We've got at least one big-ass game a month. And then this is where things start to get a little dry. Destiny 2's Final Shape, people are excited about that. Black Myth Wukong, we'll see if that gets delayed. The, my hype for that game is too high. I'm more worried about that one than any other game because um, I love Sekiro. Sekiro is my favorite FromSoft game and uh, it really looks Sekiro-y. Um, but I feel like it's it's a lot easier to market a Souls-like than it is to make a Souls-like. Like, Lies of P is actually fantastic. Like, it is a very, very, very good Souls-like. It's basically a Souls game. But most games fail. Like, most games can't actually pull it off. And they always look right in the marketing, and the trailers always look exactly like what you should think, but they don't feel right, and it's really hard to tell. So I'm currently skeptical about Black Myth Wukong, though excited. Let's see if Bungie can finally put out a banger and get absorbed by Sony. I don't know about that, but... Uh, yeah, I don't... I, it's like a matter of, will they get me back into Destiny 2? I used to play a lot. Uh, and then Warhammer 40k Space Marine 2 looks also too good. Um, game looks very good. Like, unbelievable that it runs. Uh, but my thing is I feel like it's either going to have technical issues or I'm worried the gameplay might be a little bit repetitive just based on what we've seen. It's like obviously very Gears of War-y. It's hard to say that because Gears was clearly inspired by Warhammer. But um, those are my picks for the ones that have release dates. For games that don't have release dates... Well, we just got that one, didn't we? Oh, it's only on PC. That game's not coming to Xbox. Unless Arc 2, just a little bit exciting. I think Baby Steps will be fun. Mm. Cannibal Tales? What? <laughs> Why are we making that? Death Stranding iOS. I didn't know that was a thing. That's interesting. What that looked like. Should be Elden Ring DLC in here somewhere. I still haven't finished Elden Ring. I really do want to go back and, uh, and finish it. What type of PC do I recommend? Um, I don't really know how to recommend you a type of PC. Uh, but I like gaming laptops a lot more than the average person. Um, I am going to do a room tour of this room. I've just been yeah, not making content because I've been trying to deal with my shit. So I will do one and show off more of my PC and give you the actual specs because it's pretty sweet. How am I going to pull myself away from the new Dragon's Dogma in March to play anything else? There's nothing else out in March. I don't need to. All I need to do in March is play Dragon's Dogma. That's it. God, I hope it's as good as the first game. It looks good, but it's all like they're showing combat stuff. The reason I love Dragon's Dogma is actually the quest design and the story. So it's like not the stuff you can see. God, that game's so fucking good. So fucking good. Like, I feel like if I don't love Dragon's Dogma 2, I'm just going to replay Dragon's Dogma. <laughs> Which is fine with me, because there's, like, there are a bunch of achievements I don't have, because you have to do quests in really specific orders, otherwise quests will lock each other out. Um, I'm down to go through with a walkthrough and play through that fucking game. So sick, dude. Hades, two PC early access, looking forward to that. I always found Harold Halibut to look really interesting. I'm sure I will play that game. Welcome Little Nightmares. Big fan of Little Nightmares, personally. Also didn't finish the second game, though. I should go back and do that, too. Uh, yeah, I tend to play a lot more um, indie games these days, too. Um, that I usually, like, don't know until they're out, and then you get them recommended to you, and that's when I play them. So it's like, I'm sure I'll play plenty of stuff on this list, I just don't know what it is that I want to play yet. Silent Hill 2. 
yeah, I think it'll be a pretty good year. It'll be hard to beat last year. It's one of those just absolute bangers. But I think we're in for some good gaming this year, lads. I think we've got some good games coming for us. I have not finished BG3, no. But I have put a lot more time in. I'm at the, like the end of Act 2. Ba, ba, ba. Wonder what Hideo and Jordan Peele are up to. Um, they're up to that game they revealed at the Game Awards. It's like clearly a Silent Hill vibe survival horror on Xbox. Apparently using the cloud, which whatever the fuck that means. Yeah, OD, that's it, Jeff. Thank you. Just want Fable. Surely we get that this year, right? Maybe not. Maybe that'll be like mid next year. I don't know. I feel like they announced it like a while ago. I don't know. All right. That's my lunch break over. I gotta get back to work, everybody. I hope you're having a wonderful year. Um, yeah, like I said, I might try and stream Prince of Persia tonight. I originally had plans, but they fell through. Uh, so now I have some time. But I've been pretty sleepy, so I don't know. We'll see. Hopefully. Hopefully. Uh, let's go raid Bruce. Go raid your boy Bruce Green. Thank you, Denny. And, uh, yeah. Have a wonderful day. Raid Bruce Green. Say hi to them gooses. You tell them I said g'day, mate. How's it going? Spell that however you will. <laughs> Thank you for the well wishes to Banjo. I appreciate it. 